Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning into Classical FM. Our first selection this evening will be played by the world's finest orchestra, the Philharmonic, performing Mozart's classically beautiful Violin Concerto in F. So please enjoy. Yeah, we can I mean, that sounded like Mozart going in, but somewhere along the violinist maybe forgot what instrument he was playing, and more importantly, what was that thing he was doing with his mouth? Beatboxing is a little known, little studied, and little performed development in the grand world of music. It is also one that is terrifically exciting, innovatively new, and is dynamically changing the world of music as we know it. Beatboxing or the art of producing drum and rhythm noises with your body, particularly your mouth, is a fun, engaging musical medium. But as we'll see, it's also a global musical phenomenon with its own rich culture and community. It has a unique ability to unite distinct genres of music like hip hop and classical to create something new. And on a day like this, when we're concerned with thinking outside the box, beatboxing provides us that new creative outlet that allows us to move forward. So today we're gonna to immerse ourselves in the culture of beatboxing. First, we're gonna explore the history that shaped beatboxing. Then, we'll learn some basic beatboxing techniques. And last, we'll look at beatboxing's place in our world today and look forward to where it will take the world of music tomorrow. Let's go. Oh, and just a disclaimer, beatboxers have a tendency to, ne to neglect the time-honored phrase, say it, don't spray it. So just know that the first three rows are a slash zone. <laughs> now, each of you in this room has beatboxed before. In fact, you've been beatboxing your whole life and you probably didn't know it. Have you ever been watching a live performance at a concert or a party and suddenly everyone just starts stomping or clapping to the beat? It's like any good performance of, we will rock you. You didn't need to be told to do that. It just naturally happened because there was an urge inside of you, some desire to capture the rhythm of the music, some a desire to participate in it by accentuating the move or the groove of the piece. You know, scientists will call this innate engagement. Music theorists will call it rhythmic repetition. But whatever you call it, that's beatboxing. In fact, it's in this framework of inner primal rhythm that beatboxing was founded. The first beatboxers were actually African tribal members who'd use their mouths, chests, and hands to create the backbeat for their tribal music. And for centuries, this was the only form of beatboxing that existed, cultural music with a primal vibe. Now fast forward, we're in 1970s Brooklyn, out on the streets. Think of Notorious B.I.G., Big Daddy Kane, Doug E. Fresh, all innovating a rich beatbox culture, part of hip hop. They, this all comprised of emceeing, turntabling, graffitiing, and b-boying. All this was the cultural backdrop for beatboxing. Now, the technology that drove this new hip-hop music was actually the beatbox. This was a small electronic box with buttons on it, each of which, when pressed, would give you a different drum sound. So you could press the buttons on this box and come up with the drum track for a song. For example, I could go And as beatboxes became more widely used in hip hop music, people began experimenting, try to reproduce with their mouths the same sounds that beatboxers, that producers were creating using beatboxes in studios. But how did the early beatboxers do this? How do you actually go about vocalizing these drums and snares that beatboxers seem to pull off so easily? As it turns out, beatboxing at its core is nothing more than breath control. Just regulating the flow of air as you breathe in and breathe out. And once you know that, the world is your oyster. You can recreate a drum set, kick drum, hi-hat, snare, cymbal. You can recreate turntable effects. 
You can recreate sounds from actual instruments. A bass. A trumpet. Even an electronic synthesizer. You can recreate sounds from everyday life. A heartbeat. A passing airplane. Even a zipper. <laughs> the range of sounds in beatboxing is really astounding. And the amazing thing is that each of these sounds is just a vocalized word. That turntable effect from earlier, that was simply me saying the word chewy. The, the synthesizer effect was just the word new. And finally, the most common beatboxing rhythm, the boots and the cats, well, that's just three words back and forth. Boots and cats and boots and cats. Now, when I was actually first learning beatboxing, I'd practice my boots and cats everywhere, in the car, um, in my room, and my mom was like genuinely concerned about me. She thought I was obsessed with the pussycat dolls or something. <laughs> but looking broader, beatboxing is much more than a tool designed to get mothers worried over their teenage son's mental sanity. Beatboxing, the world of beatboxing, starting from primitive tribal music, moving through 70s hip hop, is still growing and expanding. New sounds are being developed, new instrumental combinations, new members are joining this thriving international community. And when we look at beatboxing's place in our world, we realize how much the internet has played a role in creating a new platform for collaboration, allowing beatboxers around the world to connect, sharing ideas and music. In fact, I was actually introduced to beatboxing in the same way that all teenagers learn new things these days, YouTube. And on YouTube, you can go and find such eclectic beatboxing channels as Swiss Beatbox from Switzerland, Tom Thumb from Australia, Kenny Muhammad from Brooklyn. You'll find people like Kyla Mulati and Nicole Paris who are producing wonderful music and at the same time breaking ground as women in a field that has, that has so far been male dominated. And you'll find Kevin Alushala, a beatboxer who seeks to unite hip hop and classical music with his unique invention of cello boxing, playing the cello and beatboxing at the same time. And it's this last example, Kevin Alushala's cello boxing, that I think really demonstrates the ultimate takeaway of this art form. Beatboxing erases lines. Because adding beatbox to another instrument, be it the cello or the human voice, or the guitar, or the flute, or even the violin, that new combination means a new musical sound. It's like going on to iTunes and taking your classical playlist and um, at the same time taking your pop playlist and meshing them together to form a new unified product. Now, at the same time, the focus always stays on people. Because beatboxing is uh, be like singing creates sounds using only the human body, making it an organic and utterly human art. So when you combine beatboxing with, say, the violin, you give the violin that human quality. It connects you to that prime, primal tribal rhythm that the African tribes found. And it's something that you won't get with any electronic drum track. And before I demonstrate exactly what I mean by this whole process of combining disciplines, I'll just add that as we move forward, in the world of music, given that beatboxing has, has secured its place among the world of art as a wonderful new addition, as we move forward, the most important thing to keep in mind is to always, always think outside the beatbox.